Today we're going to learn how to make code mods in Lua for SM64 with no experience needed. You're going to need an SM64 game, you're going to need a code editing program, and some documentation that I will provide. We're going to cover everything that you need to know to get started with coding in Lua. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? A function is basically a block of code and whatever we put inside this block of code is going to happen whenever we trigger our function. So to get started here we're going to make a new function by writing out the word function and giving our function a name. And we can name our function anything we want but the best uh, thing for now to do is uh, name it Mario Update because that's just going to help us uh, keep track of everything later once we start making multiple functions. On this same line here I'm gonna make a parenthesis. I'm gonna put the letter M. That is gonna be our parameter. You don't need to know what that is just yet. We'll worry about that later. And to make this function work properly I need to write the word end. Anything I write between function and end will happen when this is triggered. I'm going to add a comment here by putting two dashes and whatever I write in my comment, which will show up green in most uh, code editors, will not affect the rest of my code here. So this line I'm writing right now is just a note for people to read who happen to be reading my code and does not affect the function or anything else in the code. One small exception to what I just said is um, that the mods are actually named and described by comments at the very top of your code. So the first two lines, the third line is actually game mode, I won't be doing that, but uh, your name and description are actually going to be comments at the top of your code with the word name and description in front of it. Next we're going to briefly talk about data types. A data type is a type of value assigned to a variable. So a few commonly used data types include booleans, which is basically a true or false value. We got integers, which is any whole number, one, two, three, uh, or negative one, two, three, etc. Floating points, which are one, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, any decimal numbers. String is a text value. An array, or uh, an array is a collection of values. A table is similar to an array, but different, and an enumerator is similar, and we'll get to uh, tables later. So we're going to start making some variables here. Variables are a value represented by a data type. So here I have my first variable is called amount of something. You can name your variables whatever you want. And I made it an integer that is equal to 4. So that is a global variable, meaning it is affected all the way uh, in the entire code. A local variable will only be affected uh, either locally in this script here that we're writing, so if we make another script we can't reference the variable, or if I make that same local variable inside of the uh, function. For example, I made a float variable here, and this local float variable will only affect this function. So if I tried to reference that in another function, it just wouldn't work. Also, um, in this case, for what we're going to use it for, we're going to use it for Mario's speed, so this float's going to get converted to an integer in the game anyhow. It doesn't really matter that it's a float. Next, we're going to talk about syntax. This is the most annoying part about programming, honestly. It is the grammar of code. So basically, everything needs to be written exactly a specific way. If anything's even a little bit off, like for example, this is an end of function error if I do not have an end to my function. So you're going to get an EOF error in game. And we can talk about how to check for problems like that later. Or if it's misspelled like this, same deal. I'm going to get a problem here. If, um, let's say I got a, a comma in the wrong place, like got a space in the wrong place, it's not spaced out properly, then I'm going to have a problem. If you're having issues in game with your code for any reason, press the tilde key and you'll get some hints as to what could be wrong with your code. For example, here we should not have a comma after then. Next we're going to talk about hooks and basically hooks are used uh, to let our code communicate with existing functions within the program. So they're mainly used uh, to hack or mod other programs. So you install a hook and it will allow us to change variables that are in the game. 
So if you check the documentation that I provided in the description, you'll be able to see a list of hooks here. So we have some options, we have examples. The main thing that we're going to work with is going to be uh, our Mario update hook because that's going to update every frame and it's going to be pretty much the most useful one for most of the things you're going to want to do. Although it is resource intensive, so if you can, take a look around and see, you know, if you're going to make something happen when you get damaged, you could use on damage hook instead. That's better for performance. So to install our hook, we're going to write the word hook events. We're going to make a parenthesis here and we're going to go ahead and write our, uh, we're going to paste our hook into there, Mario update. And then we're going to make our, uh, we're going to put in the name of our function that we want to activate, in this case, Mario update. So when Mario update happens in the game, our Mario update function will be triggered. Next, we're going to look at our Mario states. We're going to use one of these values here and this is going to change something about Mario whether it's his velocity position or something like that for now we're gonna go ahead and use number of coins which I found by hitting control F very useful tool by the way control F to find on a page you can also use that in your code to find and replace all of the words in your code which is very useful um, but for right now, we're going to go ahead and use number of coins. So anytime we change a Mario state, we're going to need our parameter m for Mario. So m.numcoins is equal to whatever our coins are currently. So we're just going to copy and paste the same thing, m.numcoins. And then we're going to add our variable amount of something which if you remember from earlier is equal to four so every second our coins are going to equal whatever they're currently equal to plus four so as you can see every single frame our coin count is increasing by four so it's just going up continuously basically in game we have what's called our Lua profiler and this helps us determine uh, the performance cost of our mod so we want to keep our number kind of low so it doesn't have a huge performance cost. Most Mario states are integer values. Some of them here are vector threes which are basically X, Y, Z coordinates for Mario's position, velocity, etc. So it'll look like m.vel.y or X or Z. Next we're going to be talking about statements and we're going to be covering if then statements today. So we're going to write if Mario's velocity y is equal equal to, the reason we're using two equal signs is to check if the value is equal to zero. So if Mario's y velocity is equal to zero, then whatever we put inside of the statement will happen if that condition is met. So up here it might be confusing, but we use two equal signs to check if Mario's y velocity is equal to zero. If it's greater than or equal to zero is the next one, then something can happen in there. If it's less than or equal to zero, something will happen there. And we'll use tilde equals if it is not equal to zero. So right now, if Mario's y velocity is equal to zero, then can do something is equal to false. If Mario's velocity is anything other than zero, so if he's jumping or moving or anything, can do something will be equal to true. I'm going to move our coin line here, and I'm going to make it so that way if Mario's y velocity is greater than 25, our coins will go up by amount of something. Here at the bottom I added the statement, if m.controller button pressed and u-pad is not equal to zero then, which means if we are basically pressing the up button, then the, um, the code will happen, which means that underneath it says play character sound hello, meaning we press the up button and our character says hello. At the top here, I'm going to make it so that way when we press the L trigger and the button is held down, then our coin number will increase by coin number plus amount of something. Here I'm going to write the word and, so that way if 
we are holding the up button down and can do something is true. So instead of making it equal to equal to true, the double equal sign, we're just going to do if can do something, then. Remember, if our y velocity is not zero, can do something is true. Here in game, as long as we are jumping or our y speed isn't zero, we can press the up button and make a sound. And you'll say hi, everybody. And then, uh, right now I can increase my coins by holding down the L button. So I hold my L button down and my coins go up by four, as long as I'm holding that button. So what I did so far, I just made it this way to kind of point a few things out. So I'm going to simplify my code, get rid of that part I don't need. And instead of having two if-then statements, we're going to combine into one here. We're going to use the word else. So if our y velocity is equal to zero, then can do something is equal to false. Otherwise, else, it's going to be equal to true. Next, we're going to do something fancy. We're going to make it so Mario says a random sound now. So I'm making a new local variable called random sound. Right now, it's going to be equal to null. Null is not zero. Null is not one or two. Null is equal to nothing at all. Next, I'm making another variable called random thing. And it's going to be a random number. So to do that, I'm going to type math.random parentheses the first number is where we want it to start so we're going to say 1 to 10 a random number 1 comma space 10 random number 1 to 10 so now if random thing is equal to 1 we can play our first sound else we can play another sound here so we can go back to our sounds grab a new one and we can say okay let's play this sound and another thing we can do here is we can play multiple sounds. Of course, we have 10 random numbers, so let's say else if. And we can go ahead and say else if, copy this on over here, random thing is equal to 2. And then we can play another sound right there. Now I'll clean this up later, but I'm going to do this just to show you that we can add a bunch of lines here. So we can add basically 10 else ifs else if random thing equals to 3, else if random thing is equal to 4, etc. all the way down and then we're gonna go ahead and fill it in with a bunch of random sounds here so basically we're gonna have a random sound playing every time that this thing is triggered. We just make our play character sound play a random sound there at the bottom. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing I just did, but a little bit better, because like I said, it can be a bit more efficient. So right here, I've made a table. Each thing is numbered one through 10. That makes it a table because each thing is numbered. I've also added our variable and can do something at the top. So if you remember from earlier, if our y velocity is zero, can do something is false. Otherwise, it's true. So if we're jumping or moving in any way, can do something is true. So if it's true, we can just write the variable can do something as it is in our if statement right there. Next, I've added a local variable called random index, and it's just a random number between 1 and 10. And we have another thing underneath, which is our sounds, and the number is random index. So I could pick any one sound I wanted, but I'm in this case picking all the random sounds to play. In game here, as long as I'm jumping or moving on the Y axis, then I can uh, press the up button to make a sound. Next thing we're going to cover is arguments and parameters. So we're going to start off by making a new function and we're going to call it multiply speed. And this time we're going to go ahead and add two arguments. Our first argument is going to be M for Mario, his object. The second one is going to be called multiplier is what we're going to call it. And we could call this whatever we want to. So now we have two parameters in, in this new function that we just made. We're going to change Mario's forward velocity using m forward vel. We're going to make it whatever it currently is multiplied by our multiplier. So now we're going to go up to our function up here. And if our trigger is down, left trigger is down, what we're going to do is... Uh, so we change that from y speed to our, our left trigger being down. So that's going to make 
uh, can do I can do something true and it's going to call our function multiply speed and it's going to use the argument 2 to make our multiplier set to 2 so down here Mario's forward velocity is equal to Mario's forward velocity times 2 basically whatever it currently is times 2 and I was using this in another video you'll see here to um, I'm running around here for a second we can look at my speed uh, sort of and I can launch into a parallel universe doing this because I can gain so much speed so that's kind of fun let me know in the comments if you found this helpful if you have any questions or if you want to see a part two